On Sunday, February 14th, 2021, an anonymous user, son of Anton, posted in the 4chan paranormal community about his father's discoveries whilst working on the McMurdo base. The user, who for today we will just call Anton, came across a thread discussing this Google Earth image. The image looks to be a huge spider-like creature making its way across the treacherous wasteland of the continent. Users debated its size and sought to find a reasonable explanation for the figure until shortly into the debate, Anton began to share a story. I'm using a name because it's easier for me to keep track of this shit. Some background. My dad is a doctor, was stationed at McMurdo for 11 months in the 90s, not saying what year because he was the only doctor there and y'all could track me down frequently went out on scientific expeditions. First and foremost, there were some areas where people just didn't go. They weren't environmentally hazardous, they just were avoided for one reason or another. When my dad asked one of the researchers who had been there for 10 years, he went pale and told them to shut up. It was about 30 miles south, 10 east of McMurdo. They took a five mile detour around whatever the hell was there. Anton shares with users that his father had worked on the base and after his time there, he had shared with his son that five-legged spider-like creatures prowled the continent only at night. Anton described how the creatures had been witnessed by many, many military workers, and his father even had Polaroid images of the tracks the creatures had made, with its footsteps being 30 to 40 human steps apart. But all of the workers had been scared into silence. Anton told the thread how on one occasion his father, a doctor at McMurdo, had attempted to find out more about the mysterious creatures. When his superiors got wind of what was going on, he was swiftly brought into his superior's office and yelled at, threatened with firing, and told they didn't need none of you unwanted smart types around here. From then on, Anton's father kept his questions to himself for fear of what would happen if he spoke out. One day, Anton's father was called to treat a man he had never met before. The man had severe lacerations and was delirious, shouting they were frozen. We thought they were dead whilst he was being treated. Anton's father was told the man, who he didn't believe even worked at the base, had simply fallen, but the cuts were too clean to have come from rocks, and no debris had been left behind. As he was being treated, the man simply repeats, we let them loose over and over again before a guard attempted to gag him to stop him from talking anymore. Anton's father immediately tries to warn the guard off. The severity of the man's injuries meant that he was reliant on an oxygen mask, and gagging him would mean a certain death. After that, Anton's father was escorted out and locked in his quarters until the injured man had apparently left the continent. As Anton was posting, users began jumping onto the thread, demanding to see any kind of proof of what Anton was saying. Anton responded by posting images of a plaque his father had received, which indeed confirmed he was there. As well as this, Anton said that his father had logged a lot of information on a computer, which he believed was still in the house. Hours later, an image of a computer, an Apple II, was posted by Anton, who had another story to share. Anton then told users how on one occasion, his father had been out in the field driving with some colleagues when they hit something. Jumping out of the car to see the damage, Anton's father was horrified to see something that resembled one of the monsters from the film Cloverfield. The creature, with spindly legs like a spider, had been completely crushed by the vehicle and was clearly dead. Before he could even believe what he was seeing, Anton's father was rushed back into the car and told to shut up about what he had seen. A cryptid, some deformed Arctic creature. Or was something even more terrifying going on at the McMurdo base? According to Anton, the death toll in Antarctica was much larger than people would assume. Anton's father would tell his son about the devastating conditions some people would die in, ripped apart limb from limb and left in the snow to freeze. Anton's father would have to wait until the bodies thawed so that he could sew them back together and send them back home. But on one occasion, another man Anton's father had never met was brought in. He was missing his lower limbs and his intestines were spilling out. They couldn't find his lower half. Instead, Anton's father had to do the best he could to present the body to the man's family when his corpse was flown home. But what Anton's father did note was the fact that this was no quick death. By the looks of his injuries, he had been torn apart and clawed down from the bottom of his rib cage with scratches and bite marks covering his torso. Even worse, his death was covered up and classified as hypothermia. Hmm, sure. 
By this time, so many unidentified men had been brought before Anton's father. So many unknown men in such a small area. He questioned why it appeared these men, or Arctic warfare officers as they were called, were being shipped en masse to die. But of course, he couldn't say anything. Instead, he was forced to keep his head down and mouth shut. Arctic warfare officers weren't the only groups of people dying in horrific ways and being presented before Anton's father. Researchers were too. One time, whilst working on the body of a researcher, he struck gold. Inside their pockets was a journal. The journal contained deeply detailed diagrams and descriptions of animals that just didn't exist. What was going on? Fed up, Anton's father cornered another researcher, book in hand, and questioned her. She stiffened up and refused to answer anything. Hours later, Anton's father was given a final warning, shut up or get out. He was threatened with being sent back to America once again. Undeterred, Anton's father waited until his base commanding officer was out one day and took his chance to rifle through his things. He found hundreds of documents detailing operations that had taken place, excursions and experiments happening over and over again with detailed results. The base had been used to create and perfect military-grade animals to be used in warfare, and Anton's father had been an unwilling participant in everything. Suddenly, officers broke into where Anton's father was and detained him. He knew too much. He had to go. Anton's father was days away from being shipped back to the U.S., and knowing that his time was up, he spent every last second that he had on the continent, collecting evidence and testimony. One morning, days away before he was due to leave, a man named Jones shook him awake. He told Anton's father how he had just got back from a mission and he needed to talk to him. Anton's father told him to come back when he was awake, but instead Jones presented his story to Anton's father. Now awake, Anton's father listened to Jones as he described how he had gotten up at 5 a.m. the day before to go on an expedition with some researchers. Only, they didn't take the military car. Instead, they took a truck with an M134 minigun on it, along with tens of other weapons. After they load out, they go southwest, pulling up to what looks like an office building. Inside, Jones describes to Anton's father how the building was some sort of government lab, similar to what you would expect in a film. Carnage broke out straight away. From Jones's account, it seemed that they had stumbled across some Chinese testing facility. Once clear of the entrance, with bodies littering the hallways, they move downstairs to a set of tunnels. Once through, they find an underground secret laboratory with broken cages, dead bodies, and unfamiliar technology everywhere you could see. But Jones revealed to Anton's father that this was part of something bigger, much bigger. You see, the tunnels weren't just for getting across the facility on foot. No, the tunnels actually hosted bullet trains with destinations like Hong Kong, New York, Melbourne, London, countries from all over the world. But that's not all. One cage had two of the primordial spider creatures inside with the remnants of a human child. The creatures were being fed with children from all over the world. The Chinese base was being used as a human trafficking ring with the victims ending up as dinner for what seemed like man-made creatures of warfare. Jones told Anton's father how it took them over 18 hours to clear the facility. Users questioned Anton some more, and he told them how his father believed from various accounts and eyewitness testimonies he had collected the creatures that have existed for millennia. Frozen from the Ice Age, they had been slowly brought back to life through various DNA technologies and biologically altered. And with that, Anton's father was sent back to the U.S. He was court-martialed for his crimes of snooping too much in the base. But according to Anton, as he had never signed an NDA, he was free to go. The knowledge was buried until his son shared all of that on February 14th, 2021. After recounting his father's story, Anton left the thread, promising that he would get professional help to recover the hard drive on his father's Apple II and prove the terrible events going on in the hidden continent. To this day, Anton hasn't posted again.